Hello everyone, welcome to another amazing video. If you enjoy the content, I ask that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming parts and new videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Are you ready? Let's go. In a stormy night, filled with thunder and lightning all around, Sheng lay on the ground. He mourned for being someone who brings misfortune to those around him. He began to recount that in his past life, he caused a driver's death simply by being a passenger in the car. Lu Sheng then related that after this, he reincarnated in another world where he brought bad luck to his parents until their deaths. At that time, even the townspeople were angry with his presence, as drought struck the village soon after Sheng was born. He also shared that he had been away training for a while, during which time he brought disasters to all his sect brothers. Now, as he still lay under that storm, he said that it was finally his turn. After saying this, a powerful lightning bolt struck exactly where Sheng was lying. As he lay there, he merely stated that he was finally about to die. Following this event, a system notification informed that Sheng activated the Fatal Tribulation ability. Time passed, and now people were heading towards the most powerful houses among the eight sects of the Floating Lands, the Wan Tian sect. One person remarked that the training back then was truly risky, as they faced numerous dangers. Another said it was indeed difficult, but they managed to complete it thanks to senior brother Sheng. At this moment, Fang Xu arrived joyfully calling for brother Sheng. Fang Xu was 17 years old, and her qi cultivation was at the seventh stage. Sheng then said he was happy to see her, but asked what she was doing there. Sheng, now 18 years old, also had his qi cultivation at the seventh stage. Fang then jumped into Sheng's arms, saying she was there because she missed him a lot. People around were embarrassed watching the scene. Sheng merely asked Fang Xu where her master was. She yelled at Sheng, saying that the sect leader was already waiting for him. Sheng, feeling embarrassed, just thanked her for letting him know. As Sheng walked towards the sect leader, he started to think about his story, how his name is now Lu Sheng, and he's a traveler who reincarnated from another world. Essentially, he died in his old world, and reincarnated in this new world where the floating lands exist, becoming part of the population of that village. He also shared that he became an orphan at the age of 12. However, in the current year, he was seen by the Wantian sect leader and became his disciple, after which Sheng began to cultivate. As Sheng approached the door, he thought that he needs to become someone powerful, someone who can control his own destiny and thus protect everyone around him. Sheng then clasped his hands and standing before the throne, said he was there to pay his respects to his master and all the elders. Zhou Lin, who is the sect leader, told Sheng that he had led the team to train in a splendid manner. Sheng simply responded that all of it was possible thanks to his master's teachings, and thanks to this he was able to surpass the seventh stage of qi cultivation during that training. Mu Rong, observing Sheng from a distance, commented that he could probably be considered a genius among all the youth of the floating lands. Another person remarked that having qi cultivation at the seventh stage at 18 years old was incredible. Mu Rong said that was interesting, but comparing him with Xu Er, there was still no contest. Worse than that, they shouldn't even dare to compare Sheng with Qing Yu. Sheng then looked at Qing Yu and thought that she was a powerful genius, and also his rival. Qing Yu was a genius at 19 years old, and her qi cultivation was at the ninth stage. The sect leader caught Sheng's attention, saying that he has a unique body and his talents are unlimited. However, he must not by any means frustrate everyone's expectations. Sheng just replied yes although he thought he didn't understand what was so special about him. The leader then began to rise from the throne while saying that, since Sheng had returned safely, it was now possible to start preparing his own funeral. Everyone around was shocked to hear that, as they weren't expecting this news. Sheng then, surprised, asked if he was really considering this. The leader, already standing, announces that he is about to begin his tribulation and ascension. Sheng starts to wonder how it works. Essentially, in the floating lands, when a cultivator fully achieves the great path, they can summon a celestial tribulation. If they succeed, they will ascend and become a deity. However, it is said that the rules of the heavens have changed, and thus, there has been no celestial tribulation for the last 3,000 years. At this moment, Sheng begins to question how confident his master is, at least how likely he thinks it is to succeed. Leader Zhou Lin asks everyone not to worry. After all, he has his own reserves, and everyone there knows his technique. Sheng feels a bit more relieved, remembering that this technique is the ancestral divinity technique, stealing from the heavens, changing the days. Sheng believes that indeed his master Zhou Lin might be able to invoke a tribulation, 
Leader Zhou Lin informs everyone that he has become the first person from those floating lands to ascend after these 3,000 years, and that since the Wan Tian sect was founded, a new prosperity will fall upon everyone. Mu Rong remains serious upon hearing all this, but does not say a word. The sect leader tosses something toward Sheng, telling him to appear tomorrow at the time of Chen. Sheng, confused, catches what the leader threw his way. Sheng then observes it, while Fang Xiao screams that it is the sect leader's token. She also says that this probably means that the sect leader is going to hand over the realms to Brother Sheng. Sheng, pleased with this, simply responds with, yes. The sect leader then says he is leaving, and his body begins to disappear gradually. Fang Shu, with a suspicious smile, asks Sheng if he has heard that if any human manages to ascend, even the chickens and dogs of that village will ascend as well. Sheng, baffled, starts to imagine himself with his arms replaced by chicken wings. Fang Shu tells Sheng that, when he is doing well next time, please do not forget her. Sheng remains silent watching Sister Ching Yu approaching him. Ching Yu then congratulates Sheng for surpassing the seventh layer of qi cultivation, but unfortunately, that still wasn't enough. She continues walking while saying that if one's talent does not match their position, a terrible calamity will arise in that village. She goes on her way asking him to take care. Fang Xu overhears the entire conversation and wonders why Ching Yu, who is at the same level as her, thinks she is so conceited. Fang Xu just asks Sheng to ignore her. Sheng then just feels concerned, since, like it or not, Ching Yu is right in saying that. Sheng then begins to leave the hall while thinking that, Despite having completed the seventh layer of cultivation, the road will still be long, and he will need to travel it. Sheng starts to think that cultivation is not an easy task, since cultivation has six phases, and each main phase is divided into nine smaller stages. They are qi cultivation, cultivation base, spiritual formation, fetal essence, combined body, and the complete great path. Sheng continues reflecting that each overcoming is defined after hard work and several fortuitous encounters. Many who have walked this path ended up being buried in the sand. Sheng thinks about all this, despite not knowing about his own gifts and talents. He just recognizes that being chosen by his master was one of the fortuitous encounters. The next day arrives, and Sheng goes to the top of a hill where his master is about to ascend. Zhou Lin just says that Sheng can stay there watching everything that will happen. Sheng is surprised by how quickly everything is happening. Zhou Lin says that all this is about a secret of the sect, as well as some special supplements. Sheng listens attentively while saying yes. Zhou Lin begins his ritual to ascend, saying, Profound ancestors of the heavens and earth, the base of all creations. After this start, energy already begins to overflow from his clothes. Zhou Lin then continues, Extensive cultivation, challenging the tribulations, prove yourself worthy to be noteworthy. In the three realms, only I am the king. At this moment, in addition to his body overflowing with immense energy, his body is also floating towards the sky. Sheng is amazed by all this, saying that this is the technique of stealing from the heavens, changing the days. Zhou Lin continues his ritual. Body imbued with golden aura throughout my entire body. Watch but do not see, listen but do not hear. Spanning heaven and earth, hearing the masses. Zhou Lin is close to the sky, yet continues his ritual saying, reciting poems a million times inner glow, the guardian of the three realms, five emperors to receive, the gods carrying gifts, exercising the thunderous blows. And to conclude, Zhou Lin shouts, Attract! while holding up two fingers and his body overflowing with immense energy. The sky begins to darken as a great storm approaches. Some lightning bolts start to fall around Sheng, and he is confused as to why this is happening since those bolts should be heading towards Zhou Lin, not him. Zhou Lin, trying to escape from it, yells to his master that the tribulation was about to land on him and not on his master. His master Zhou Lin then looks down seeing Sheng running all over the place. Sheng keeps running towards his master while dodging all the lightning bolts. Zhou Lin then focuses his power on Sheng, causing Sheng to be paralyzed on the ground, unable to move. Sheng is confused about what is happening. Suddenly a strong lightning bolt strikes Sheng's body directly. He begins to scream in pain as all that energy hits his body. It was an extremely powerful bolt. The bolt leaves a small crater on the ground right where Sheng was, and Sheng now falls towards this crater while his body is energized. Zhou Lin begins to descend back to earth while asking Sheng if he is confused about all this. Zheng has completely blue eyes while unable to speak a word. Zhou Lin then asks Zheng if he finds it strange that he is not receiving any help from his master, or why is the tribulation affecting him and not Zhou Lin? Then, looking up at the dark sky, Zhou Lin responds that the person who actually attracted the tribulation was Zheng, 
not him. Zheng, sweating profusely, is shocked to hear that. Sheng is on the ground, disbelieving that it was really him who attracted the tribulation. Zhou Lin, seeing him on the ground, replies that in the last 3,000 years, Zheng was the only one in the floating lands to possess the body attribute disaster attraction. He continues to explain that this body attribute can only be found in the secret scriptures of the Wan Tian sect. Zhou Lin explains that originally his body attribute was thousand disasters and that he meddled with the secret inheritance and put it in his body and weapon to recreate him. Zheng, in disbelief, asks if he really recreated him, because if that's the case, before he can finish his sentence, Zhou Lin says that the drought that Sheng's village suffered did not worsen because of him. In fact, Zhou Lin used his technique, stealing from the heavens, changing the days, to alter the climate. He also explains that it all began the year before Zheng's parents died. Zheng then recalls when he was mourning over his parents' grave. Zhou Lin says that there were setbacks during Zheng's training. Sometimes the unlucky body attribute really caused things, but many times Zhou Lin needed to send some special gifts. Zheng then begins to imagine the things he went through in his life and starts to understand that all of it was his master's fault instead of his own. Zhou Lin, with an evil laugh, says that all the deaths of those insignificant were worthy to get where he arrived. He further explains that after all the sacrifices he has had so far, Zheng finally advanced his body attribute to million disaster. Zhou Lin begins to fly again while saying that tribulations never happened in those floating lands. But now, thanks to Zheng, this would be possible that even in those godforsaken lands, Zheng will still be struck by the storm. Zheng tries to get up enraged. He shouts out loud, calling his master Zhou Lin a traitor. Zhou Lin continues with his evil laughter, asking his good disciple not to be angry. After all, it was thanks to the protection of his good master that Zheng was not struck by the storm to death. Sheng then sees a power emerging from his ring. It was the token that the sect leader gave him the day before. Sheng is frustrated for not realizing this earlier. A strong energy rises to the sky from the token, while Zhou Lin recites, The signal in fact consists of the power of stealing from the heavens, changing the days. Zhou Lin can't contain his happiness and continues laughing like a madman. Sheng then points his sword at himself, saying that he will not allow Zhou Lin to finish with that. Zhou Lin points his fingers at Zheng, saying that he will not allow his ungrateful disciple to spoil his plans after so long. At this moment, the sword in Zheng's hands is completely destroyed. Zheng looks at his hand as his sword turns to dust and cannot believe what is happening. At that moment, another powerful lightning bolt strikes Zheng's body directly, and he can only scream in pain. Zhou Lin, looking at the new sky emerging, happily says that in all these eras of cultivation, he will finally escape the mortal realm and that the path of ascension will be his alone. He then heads towards the sky saying goodbye to that lower realm. He says this while continuing his evil laughter. From afar, his other disciples comment that Zhou Lin probably ascended. Ching Yu, seeing that glow in the sky, asks if the tribulations of that land can still undergo ascension. Sheng sees that huge beam of light reaching the sky and laments that it will end this way. He starts to remember everything he went through there and says that he was wrong, that he trusted the wrong person. His hopes were shattered. In the end, he couldn't protect anyone. Apparently, he is the disaster himself, the original sinner. At this moment, the system wants to notify something, but it seems to have no energy. Several notifications try to emerge but lack the strength to show what is written. Sheng laments that now death is certain, not to mention that this will be his second death. He then remembers that in his past life and the current one, all he wanted was to get stronger, protect his friends, and even fulfill his revenge. But in the end, he didn't do any of that. Sheng, with hatred in his heart, says that he will die, but why will he? Why does Zhou Lin have the qualifications to ascend? Why? 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 Jing complains that no one should carry the burden of the original sin, but in the end, all this happened because he is weak. The system then gains strength and notifies that Sheng activated the certain death tribulation. It is also noted that he successfully revived the system. Sheng then opens his eyes, not understanding what is happening. He begins to stand up asking if he is still alive. He looks at his hands and notices that the wounds have disappeared, and he realizes that his cultivation has increased. Zheng then sees a system in front of him and says that it seems like the gold finger system needed in an isekai world. He is still surprised by what he is seeing, smiles, and says that it was extremely difficult to find. Zheng then reaches out to the system and presses confirm, then the system status appears informing that the name is Sheng. His cultivation is at the eighth layer of Qi. 
His tribulation is seven. His attribute is disaster of millions of bodies. His techniques are million disaster sutra and basic immortal. The mission is tribulation day, and the remaining time is five minutes. The system also notes that Sheng survived the certain death tribulation. The first completion prize is one more survival point which has already been used. He will not gain points in the tribulation count. The system also congratulates him for activating the system, and therefore he will receive a new gift. The system also notifies that Sheng accepted the mission. Failure to complete tribulation day will result in a punishment, and that he has five minutes remaining to complete the mission. Sheng, seeing all this, is confused, especially with this punishment and this day of tribulation. He doesn't understand what is happening, but he looks to the side and says there are other things to worry about. Several peak chi demons approach from behind Sheng. He can't believe the sheer number of demons present, and with his current level of cultivation, it won't be possible to handle so many at once. Sheng then thinks that the only way is to open the new gift he received from the system. This must be the solution. The system then congratulates him on receiving a new technique called the Immortal Million Disaster Sutra. Sheng receives it as he prepares, since several of the demons are coming towards him. The system also notifies that now his chi will be imbued with the attribute Mortal Million Disaster Sutra. A lightning symbol begins to form on his forehead. At that moment, one of the cultivation demons was almost devouring him. Sheng is pleased to receive this technique just in time. He then leaps into the air, sending out lightning in all directions. Sheng then draws his sword while realizing what is happening. He sees his sword bathed in lightning and says that this is the power of the celestial tribulation. He then strikes one of the demons, finishing it off easily. The other cultivation demons become more cautious upon seeing this. Sheng, full of confidence and still with lightning emanating from his body, taunts the cultivation demons asking if they are scared. The cultivation demons start running towards Sheng, just as he also starts running towards them. Sheng, at high speed, cuts down all the cultivation demons at once, finishing each one with his lightning sword. Sheng stands in front of the system, just as the cultivation demons lie dead behind him. He starts to think that this technique, Mortal Million Disaster Sutra, along with the power of the celestial tribulation, could actually gradually increase the speed and power of his technique. Sheng observes the system again, and notices that by killing the cultivation demons, he receives seven tribulation points. But Sheng doesn't understand what these points are for. Sheng, still observing the system, also sees the Day of Tribulation option, and wonders if he should summon it. Sheng is worried that he didn't have time to think carefully about that option, but decides to press summon with two seconds left on the timer. After pressing summon, the sky begins to thunder heavily. Sheng is worried if all this will happen again, and as expected, a lightning bolt strikes towards Sheng, just like before. Sheng finds a cave while saying he didn't expect the system to be that bad. Sheng, now seated inside the cave, says fortunately the power of the Day of Tribulation was still very low. He then activates the system again and notices some changes. He begins to understand that the Day of Tribulation happens once a day, and after passing through the Day of Tribulation, he will earn five Tribulation points. He then starts to spend his points to increase his status. He realizes that he has no more points to spend. Sheng clenches his fists, realizing that something really was different. He then punches the wall, cracking it due to the impact. A crystal that was stuck in the ceiling falls. He picks up the crystal in his hand while saying he really is stronger. Apparently that system is like the one from the legend. Sheng, holding that crystal, says it's time to return to the Wantian sect. He even starts to think that, because of Zhou Lin's strength, the sect took the biggest place among the top eight sects for a thousand years. The amount of resources for cultivation was huge. Things like techniques, pills, treasure weapons, spiritual gems are all he needs. Zheng still thinks that despite all this, as he is no longer a disciple of the sect master, probably those power-hungry elders will never let Zheng become the heir of the sect. And to make matters worse, he cannot forget the great genius Xiao Qing. Zheng smiles and says that despite all that, now in possession of that system, his gifts will not be like before. Zheng further says that besides all this, the content of the disaster of millions of bodies is in the secret heritage of the Wan Tian sect. Zheng then breaks the crystal with his hand while thinking that he can never give up. Zheng, with a look full of confidence, declares that he will definitely kill his former master Zhou Lin. At that moment, Zheng senses a presence nearby. He shouts asking who is there as he throws a kunai towards the noise. The kunai hits a rock squarely, and there was Fang Xiu, who gets startled by it. Zheng, looking in the direction of his kunai, asks if it is indeed Sister Fang Xiu who is there. 
Feng Shu then comes out from behind the rock saying yes. Sheng asks what she was doing there. She simply replies that she was worried about him since he was taking long to return. A bashful Feng Shu approaches Sheng and says that when Master Zhou Lin ascended the day before, she noticed that Sheng also disappeared. She thought that he might have been hit by the tribulation too. Sheng, speechless, only manages to think that indeed, he was also struck by the tribulation. Fang Xu asks if he is all right, if anything is bothering him. Sheng only thinks that apparently his feelings were quite obvious, but responds that it was nothing. Sheng then disguises it with a smile and says that his master has finally ascended, and he is just missing him. Fang Xu then happily says that she will ask her mistress to take care of Sheng. Sheng can only think that her master is Mu Rong and Zhou Lin, and that these people are not easy to deal with. And just the fact that they haven't come to take revenge, Sheng is already thankful. Sheng then looks suspiciously to the side. He begins to think that her master, Mu Rong, is a cultivator who only cultivates spiritual mental power. But it was Fang Xu who came there to look for him. Sheng just sees Fang Xu smiling back at him. Sheng then takes a deep breath and says they should get out of there quickly since they need to return to the floating lands. Three days have passed and several people were gathered inside the hall. A person asks Sheng if he was really present when sect master Zhou Lin ascended. Sheng responds that yes. Murong then asks if his master Zhou Lin successfully ascended. Zheng simply responds that yes. Jiang, upon hearing all this, can't believe that his master really managed to invoke the divine tribulation. Feng also says that in the last 3,000 years only he, master Zhou Lin, managed to summon the celestial tribulation. Murong, not very pleased with this, merely says that Master Zhou Lin ascended, but left all of them behind. So do they still want to remember him as the master of the Wan Tian sect? Sheng becomes serious upon hearing this. Jiang takes the opportunity to ask Sheng if by any chance Master Zhou Lin passed on any technique to him related to the summoning of the tribulation. Murong and Feng wait seriously for Sheng's response. Sheng then gives a slight smile and thinks that the method to achieve it is just to use Sheng in the ritual. He also starts to think that if the disaster of millions of bodies is exposed, it would likely be used merely as a tool for the ascension of all cultivators who have completed the path. But of course, the system will never give him a second chance to revive. Sheng then answers Jing's question, saying no, that if there were any technique to be passed on, the master would probably have passed it to the sect. Jing begins to reflect worriedly, saying that the floating lands really have nothing related to the divine realm. Murong then interrupts saying to stop talking about Master Zhou Lin. He says that now that the Master has ascended, there's not much to do. Now it's just about thinking about who will be the next heir to his position. Jing says that it is indeed true, especially since the power of the sect fell by half after the Master's ascension. He also says that now they need someone with sufficient ability to take care of it and keep the sect at the top of power among all eight sects. Sheng listens in silence to all this. Basically, the Wan Tian sect is the house with the most power among the eight sects. However, several hundred years ago, sect leader Zhou Lin led a team of experts to find remains of deities. The outcomes were disastrous, with many dead and injured along the way, leading to a sharp reduction in manpower. The experts were getting older, but they still were not comparable to leader Zhou Lin. The elders were at the body combing level. After that, the subsequent generations of disciples were not so talented as to reach the body combing stage. Moreover, there were three tiers of disciples, some quite talented but too new. Among them were the administrative spirit formation disciples, the inner base cultivation disciples, and the normal qi cultivation disciples. Now that Zhou Lin has ascended, the Wan Tian sect was significantly weakened. Now being considered the most powerful sect no longer made sense. However, before ascending, Zhou Lin made some rules, being at the ninth stage of the combing layer. The first rule is that the elders will hold the reins of the situation. After that, the direct disciples of the three body combing cultivators will become candidates for sect master. The resources will be concentrated until the strongest emerges. Only then will the ceremony to assume the position of sect master be held. Murong then speaks about the disciple of the master, specifically about Sheng. And looking at Sheng, he says that when Qing Yu joined the sect at 12 years old, she started very late, and even though Master Zhou Lin saw potential in Zheng and wanted to put him as a candidate, the one with more potential is Qing Yu, who is at the incredible ninth layer of qi cultivation at 19 years old, while Zheng is still at the seventh layer of qi cultivation at 17 years old. This means that Qing Yu has already surpassed Zheng, says Mu Rong, looking at everyone. Sheng clenches his fists and feels outraged while thinking that he understands that his power is not so strong, 
but to blatantly steal something that should already be his. Morong then turns around and says that after reflecting on all he said, he has come to the conclusion that Sheng does not have enough strength and is also not suitable to enjoy the privileges of being a candidate. He is then interrupted by Sheng, who with a smile on his face says that he has heard enough about the first elder being considered a sensory master, but apparently he hasn't noticed anything up to this moment. Murong, confused, asks what he was talking about. Sheng then begins to overflow with immense orange energy. The energy grows stronger, shaking the entire hall while leaving everyone in disbelief. Murong, witnessing all that power overflowing from Sheng, can't believe that he surpassed the base cultivation. Everyone present is amazed that someone only 18 years old could reach such a point, despite that energy really being true. Sheng smiles while overflowing that enormous energy from his body. Ching Yu becomes worried seeing this and wonders how he reached the base cultivation. Since three days ago, he was still at the sixth layer of qi cultivation. That was impossible to be happening. Fang Xu is surprised to see this, and now it makes sense to her that Sheng found her hidden outside the cave. Sheng then begins to walk, saying that he used his power of tribulation enlightenment to awaken his dormant physique. He says that the previous day he managed to surpass the base cultivation. Sheng stands up still overflowing with power and confidence while thinking that all this was only possible because he added all his system points in the day of disaster category. People, hearing this, ask how is it possible for him to achieve all that in three days. After all, qi cultivation is the one that takes much more time than the others. Normally it takes one to two years just to surpass the lower stages. So what the heck was that special physique that Sheng mentioned, people around him asked. Jiang interrupts smiling while clapping. He says that Master Zhou Lin's disciple, Sheng, has already demonstrated his incredible talents and that it's good to see such a young disciple full of life. Zhang believes that this is a great omen for the Wan Tian sect. Feng says that everything Sheng did was just to catch up to Qing Yu. Qing Yu, not satisfied with the situation, states that it won't take long until she surpasses the base cultivation that Sheng has just achieved. Murong, unsure of what to do, says that given the situation, he will leave the three of them as candidates. Sheng walks towards Murong, stating that it won't be necessary. He explains that just before his master ascended, Zhou Lin assigned him a task. Sheng takes the token from his pocket and shows it to everyone, declaring that he is now the newest master of the Wan Tian sect. Everyone in the hall is outraged by this. Qing Yu, unable to accept it, exclaims that it is impossible. Meanwhile, Fang Shu is amazed to see Sheng asserting himself in such a manner. Sheng, addressing everyone, says that he holds the sect leader's token, and even after showing it, do they still want to claim it is fake? One of the attendees in the hall remarks that it is indeed incredible that Sheng has reached basic cultivation, but like it or not, he is still an administrative disciple. So how will he carry out tasks that are usually entrusted to the leader or someone from the high command? Feng wonders why the great leader Zhou Lin would entrust this to Sheng. She says it makes no sense. Smiling, Sheng replies that he is a direct disciple of Master Zhou Lin. So what's the problem with taking his place after the ascension? Zheng looks confident and says that besides, if he doesn't inherit Master Zhou Lin's throne, who will? Could it be the third elder? Elder Feng, sweating, accuses him of slander, since the old elder has no such intentions. Sheng chuckles lightly, saying that the third elder can better answer that question. Sheng points his finger at his administrative brother and asks if he doesn't think Sheng is suitable to be the new sect leader. The administrative brother is left speechless. Smiling, Sheng says he has another question. He asks if someone who has been stuck in the body combining stage for a few hundred years would oppose someone who has just entered basic cultivation, which of the two would have a better chance of ascension. Again, the administrative brother is speechless. Sheng explains that nowadays, there are a huge number of sects around the world. Yet the Wan Tian sect is indeed a very powerful house with many treasures to be used. Whether or not, other sects have always been envious of the Wan Tian sect. Sheng continues that, after the ascension of the current master, who was Zhou Lian, if the person who is to inherit his position as leader is not someone who also has cultivation equivalent to the master who ascended, what would the other sects around the world think about this? Sheng says these are facts and no deception. After all, naming the younger disciples as potential candidates is an act to hide the sect's strength. Still full of confidence, Sheng says that now that he has awakened his hidden talents, he has definitely surpassed the other two candidates for sect leader. With that said, it is obvious why Master Zhou Lin let Sheng take his place as sect master, even though it might have been a bit early. Sheng then calls on the three elders, 
asking if they are perhaps trying to go against Master Zhou Lin's orders. Jiang smiles thinking about how Sheng is truly a cunning child, since he mentions the three elders, but he says this looking directly at him. Jiang reflects more deeply now seeing all that discourse. Now indeed it seems certain the decision of the former sect leader Zhou Lin was right. Ching Yu interrupts everyone and asks to wait for her to speak. She says Sheng's thinking is correct. However, all this must be built on his talents having surpassed the other two candidates. Ching Yu begins to draw her sword from its sheath as she says that Sheng took advantage of the old sect leader's ascension to self-promote to basic cultivation. She also says that this doesn't mean he is stronger than her. Ching Yu points her sword towards Sheng and challenges him to a duel. Feng is pleased with Ching Yu's attitude, saying she is doing very well. Sheng raises a finger and says only one move. Ching Yu asks what he means by one move. Full of confidence, Sheng replies that if he doesn't defeat her with just one move, he will gladly give up his claim to become the sect leader, and she can have the position. Ching Yu becomes extremely angry with the provocation, shouting that he created this problem himself, and now he will pay for it. She immediately leaps towards Sheng, channeling powerful energy into her sword, the orange energy swirling throughout the hall. Feng Shu is surprised to see that Ching Yu's sword is a spiritual grade treasure. Meanwhile, Feng smiles and says that Ching Yu, wielding the spiritual grade treasure that she herself had made to help Ching Yu, is sure to win. Elder Jiang gives a slight smile, saying that Sheng may have made some minor discoveries, but his foundation is not stable, and because of this, he probably won't stand a chance against Ching Yu. Moreover, Sheng's sword is below average, so he will definitely lose. Murong is also annoyed with the situation and hopes that Ching Yu quickly knocks Sheng down so they can rectify the situation. After that, they will just invent something to tell the people to come up with a new plan. Furious, Ching Yu advances towards Sheng while screaming his name. She points her sword at him while asking what he could possibly do in the face of all that power she was exuding. Then a huge explosion occurs where the two were standing. Everyone watching is shocked by the impact caused by Ching Yu. They wonder if Sheng will be all right. It seems impossible to be fine after being attacked by a spiritual grade treasure. The dust from the explosion begins to settle as Ching Yu still points her sword at Sheng's body. Sheng then emerges with a smile asking if that was all she could do. Ching Yu can't believe what she's seeing. Sheng, with his body overflowing with electricity, says that her strike was too weak. He says this while holding Ching Yu's sword in his hand before it could hit him. Feng Xu and Feng are shocked by this scene. Feng says it's impossible. Sheng, still holding Ching Yu's sword with his fingers, starts to think that indeed that strike was extremely weak. It couldn't even compare to the strength of the day of the disaster. Sheng begins to remember when he received that power and thinks that three days after the system was activated, the strength of the day of the disaster gradually increased as the days went by. He also remembers standing after receiving that great electrical discharge and thinks that he needs to assume the position of sect leader at any cost. Sheng needs sufficient resources to become more powerful. Only in this way will no one else try to control him. Sheng then lifts Ching Yu's sword to his own forehead while thinking that his main goal is to kill his former master Zhou Lin. After thinking all this, Sheng uses his electrical discharge to throw Ching Yu away from the sword, doing so without even moving. Sheng starts to charge a powerful energy in his hand while apologizing for the offense, but saying he would end the battle immediately. Sheng then charges at Ching Yu. She's completely unresponsive as he quickly approaches with his hand overflowing with electricity. Elder Feng screams from a distance asking him to stop his blow. Sheng ignores her cry and strikes Ching Yu in the stomach with just a touch of his hand. This is enough to make Ching Yu cough up blood due to the impact of the blow. In addition to the damage caused, she also flies far away with the powerful impact of Sheng's strike. Ching Yu is sent flying so far and so high that Elder Feng jumps to catch her. Otherwise, the damage would have been worse. Sheng, looking at Elder Feng holding Ching Yu, declares that he has won the fight. He then turns around and mentions that one of the three candidates has already been defeated by him, and he asks Fang Xu if she wants to try her luck as well. Fang Xu waves her arm, saying that it never even crossed her mind to try something like that. Murong continues to watch from a distance, unable to believe all the power that Sheng has acquired. Carefully, Elder Feng places an unconscious Qing Yu against a pillar. Feng nervously looks at Sheng and says she ordered him to stop the attack. So why didn't he listen? The atmosphere becomes tense as the two stare at each other in the hall. Sheng smiles and says that he did hear her. Then, with a menacing look, he asks what she plans to do about it, saying this as his hand overflows with power, ready for a new fight. Feng becomes furious and tells Sheng that he has barely reached the base level of cultivation and is already so arrogant. 
Elder Feng then leaps towards Sheng, gathering immense power in her weapon, and says that today, in place of the former leader Zhou Lin, she will teach this arrogant kid Sheng a lesson. Sheng is extremely excited, thinking this is exactly what he wanted to happen. Feng, with her power, sends a malicious hand towards Sheng, saying that the arrogant one will learn his lesson right there. Sheng starts to overflow power in his hand while saying this was exactly what he was waiting for. At this moment, a huge purple explosion is caused by the impact of Feng's power. The explosion is much larger than the one caused by Qing Yu. Feng Shu is worried about what might have happened to Sheng from that powerful blow. Mu Rong, smiling, says that old elder Feng really is very strong, so probably this child couldn't resist the blow. After saying this, he widens his eyes in disbelief at what he is seeing. Murong is seeing Sheng unscathed. He had defended the powerful blow from Elder Feng without much difficulty. Sheng takes advantage of the situation to provoke Elder Feng by saying that she alone can do nothing against him. Feng becomes even more enraged and charges at Sheng, saying it's impossible for a base cultivator like him to dare challenge a body combining like her. Sheng just smiles and grabs the leader's token in his hand while saying, this will be way too easy. He then raises his hand, and a huge energy starts to emerge from the token he is holding. Feng is clueless about what's happening. Everyone in the hall is confused as suddenly an orange light starts coming out of the ground. Sheng, already overflowing with huge power from the token in his hand, yells that the sex protection matrix has been activated. Elder Feng, in disbelief at what she is seeing, asks how a kid like him has the power to activate the sex protection matrix. Sheng shows what's in his hand while laughing at the situation. Mu Rong and Zhang, in disbelief, respond that it's the sex token. Sheng, holding the token in his hand as it overflows with immense energy, gives the command imprisoned to the token. At this moment, several magic chains emerge from the lights that appeared on the ground. All the chains begin to surround Elder Feng while she is in disbelief. The chains completely bind her body while she becomes furious at this happening. The chain then starts to exert downward force, making her kneel while still trapped. Feng becomes furious despite not having enough strength to free herself from those chains. Murong, surprised at this, didn't imagine that Sheng still had such a trick up his sleeve. Feng, still imprisoned, asks Sheng how long he thinks she will stay trapped there. With a wicked smile, she says that with Sheng's current level of cultivation, he won't be able to hold her for long. She adds that when his stamina runs out, she wants to see if he still has any tricks left. Sheng lowers his head while laughing. He then raises his head with blood coming from his eye and says that her assumption isn't bad. But as the former leader of the sect Zhou Lin passed the position to Sheng, it's obvious he will have other methods to handle the situation. He continues as enormous energy overflows from the token, saying that probably everyone present felt that the token was imbued with a restriction. And as more and more energy emerges from the token, Sheng says that no one besides him will be able to activate the sect leader's token. He then begins to laugh maliciously while telling Elder Feng that for this reason, she shouldn't make him go all the way. If he is forced to use all the power of the Order, even if she doesn't die, it definitely won't be pleasant for her. Moreover, all the thousands of years of history of the Wantian sect will burn along with him. Elder Feng looks at him completely terrified, saying that the kid is completely insane. Zhang coughs lightly, drawing Elder Feng's attention, saying that since all this was arranged by leader Zhou Lin, they probably need to give Sheng a chance. Zhang also emphasizes that if Sheng cannot masterfully control the sect's token, the main order of the sect, treasures, and forbidden areas will become completely unusable. He even asks her if she knows what this means. Elder Feng, frustrated, is at a loss for words. She just lowers her head while still imprisoned by the chains of the token, while the token continues to overflow with immense energy in Sheng's hands. Ching Yu wakes up and sees Elder Feng in that situation and asks how all this came to be. Murong, looking at Sheng, says that he really is the direct disciple of the former leader Zhou Lin. He even has his dexterity. Murong still points out that on that day, Elder Feng is to blame. That said, everyone can temporarily agree on Sheng becoming the new sect leader. However, if at any time they see that he is no longer managing, the body combining elders will not retreat in the name of the order. Sheng, with both eyes bleeding, finds it odd that this is coming from the first elder Murong. Sheng lowers his head, thinking that probably Murong is pressured to retreat just by the order. Otherwise, he would never acknowledge Sheng as the new sect leader. And also, without a doubt, he is much harder to deal with than Elder Feng. Sheng remembers having access to the token during the battle against Zhou Lin. And Sheng says that fortunately, Zhou Lin demonstrated the technique 
steal the heavens change the day before he finally ascended, leaving thus the force of the tribulation within the token. Now only the ability Sutra of the Million Immortal Disaster can activate it. Sheng, holding the token, says that being able to reach such a level could already be considered a miracle in itself, but it was a shame that that power was never his. He then looks at Elder Feng still trapped and says that suppressing those chains to bind her was already quite complicated. Otherwise, he's just trying to talk tough and spouting nonsense to convince everyone of his purpose. Sheng then releases the spell that was imprisoning Elder Feng and also says that, as she contributed well, he will spare her life. Sheng then finally descends to the ground. He takes the opportunity to ask if anyone else in the hall has any objections. Zhang joins his hands and congratulates Sheng on achieving the position of sect leader. Everyone in the hall congratulates him on his new place as sect leader. Sheng fixes his hair while smiling confidently at what he has just achieved. He then places his hand on the throne and sits on it, saying that from now on he, Zheng, is the new leader of the Wan Tian sect. He smilingly asks Fang Xu and Qing Yu to stay by his side, protecting him at all times. Fang Xu and Qing Yu respond affirmatively. Sheng then says that the three elders, the twelve clan leaders, the three hundred administrators, the eight thousand disciples, and the thirty-six different families that this floating land possesses. He, Sheng, will be there building his foundation to be able to ascend. He says this with a smile on his face. At this moment, the system congratulates him for reaching the base cultivation and that now the Deity Rock commercial city is unlocked. Sheng excitedly says that now is the time to test the new function that the system has made available. Sheng goes to the top of the green bamboo peak of the Wan Tian sect. From a distance, it was possible to see the energy of the tribulation being discharged into the ground. Sheng is on his knees with a huge hole around him, caused by the electric discharge of the tribulation. Sheng is grateful for having survived another tribulation. Sheng notices the scar on his forehead shining. He places his hand on that scar and says it seems the system lives in that scar, as every time he uses the system's power, it feels like a mysterious force circulates right where the scar is. He also says that the system is truly a great mystery. Sheng is pleased thinking that his skill, Day of Disaster, is getting stronger every day. However, the points he has earned remain at five. Sheng begins distributing his points while thinking that after reaching the base cultivation level, the points needed to progress to the next layer are ten times greater, requiring a thousand points to advance. He also thinks that he needs to find other methods to get stronger as quickly as possible. Just growing on his own will not be good enough to keep up with Day of Disaster, and it's very likely that Sheng will die in one of the tribulation storms. Sheng asks the system to open the merchant city. He thinks that in the floating lands, the essentials for good cultivation are basically divided into four groups, celestial, earth, spiritual, and normal. He also says that all the groups are categorized into three subcategories, low, intermediate, and high. Sheng, staring intently at the system, thinks that the lowest level items available in the system and for sale are at least of the terrestrial classification. Such an item could even cause envy in those who are in spiritual formation. Sheng then, still observing the items, notices that there are super expensive treasures available in the system, such as the armor of mixed heavens fighting, which costs 500 divine rocks. There are also the 108 transformations, which cost 700 divine rocks. There's the Monkey King's Staff, which is a low-level celestial weapon and costs 500 divine rocks. There's the Crossing Ship, costing 8,000 divine rocks, and even the Floating Lands Matrix Mark, costing 9,000 divine rocks. Sheng, exploring the whole system, says that the currency in the Merchant City is this so-called Divine Rock. At this moment, Sheng receives a mission from the system. First, he needs to advance to spiritual formation. The reward will be 50 divine rocks. Mission 2. Devour an ancient item. The reward will be a disaster count and divine rocks depending on the item devoured. And the third mission is for him to survive a mutated disaster. The reward is unknown. Sheng says he has never heard of these divine rocks, so he will probably depend on the system to get them. Sheng begins walking again while thinking that advancing to spiritual formation for someone at his level is still far off. And to make things worse, the mutated disaster that the system also requested is even further away. Sheng observes Qing Yu and Fang Shu waiting for him while he thinks that the ancient item the system mentioned is also something he does not recognize. However, probably with the sect's history, he must have some chance of completing it. Sheng walks down the stairs towards the two. Fang Shu is happy to see that Sheng has finished his training. 
Sheng says he is happy that the two are working hard to protect him. Ching Yu angrily says she isn't protecting anything. Clearly she is being held hostage to threaten her grandmother, who is Elder Feng. Sheng then looks at her and asks if that is true. What is the problem? Ching Yu gets furious, although she can't do anything. Sheng starts walking back to the village while saying that being the protector of the sect leader isn't a bad thing. He also remembers that before Master Zhou Lin ascended, Sister Ching Yu told Sheng that if talent does not match the position, disasters could happen. Sheng turns to her saying he will remember that forever. As Sheng walks, he tells them not to worry that he won't do anything to complicate their lives. Indeed, they can return to the village since he has some things still to do. Ching Yu is worried about having to deal with Sheng, but does not respond. Sheng goes to a small temple on the edge of a cliff. He is sitting talking with Zhang. Zhang asks how he could help the sect leader. Sheng says that actually, it is he who should be asking that question. Sheng picks up the coffee cup in his hand and thanks Elder Jiang for allowing him to ascend. Jiang responds that Sheng really is a fair person who does not speak of darkness. Jiang truly admires his methods. Jiang also says that the former sect leader Zhou Lin was an acquaintance of his for a few hundred years and that the token's restriction was not designated by him. Sheng then, drinking his tea, asks what he means by that. Elder Jiang, with a suspicious look, responds that because of current events, he felt obliged to protect the sect. That being said, he had no choice but to place him in that position, but he did not imagine that Sheng would have such a cunning heart. Zhang says that unless he gives an acceptable explanation, Sheng places his cup on the table and responds that part of the power is the force of the celestial tribulation. Zhang, incredulously, asks how it is possible to force the celestial tribulation. How could that be? Sheng gives a slight laugh, asking why else would the elder have chosen him. Sheng stands up and says he will tell something just to him. Sheng then tells Elder Jiang that he was born with an affinity for storms, so he is currently quite familiar with the tribulation storm, and when he finally achieves the combined body, he will be able to replicate his master Zhou Lin's method. Sheng then turns around and says that only then will he be able to summon the celestial tribulation. Zhang, disbelieving all of this, stands up and asks if Sheng is serious. Sheng then smiles, but thinks that it was obvious that all that is a lie. After all, he would never use his own life to help others ascend. Sheng, looking at Zhang, thinks it is good to reveal just a little, as this can help make others side with him, which is very convenient for him. Sheng also thinks that Elder Zhang has always had a good guy image, but being a combined body cultivator, why wouldn't he have anything to gain? Sheng starts walking while thinking that Elder Murong and Elder Feng already have successors, only Elder Jiang is left without a successor. Sheng knows that Jiang suspects he is lying, and yet he is helping. It is probably because Jiang will also benefit from this. Sheng comments on what Jiang said about being a fair person and not speaking of darkness. Sheng then decides to clear that up. Sheng says that the combined body elder, Mu Rong, has a completely ambitious heart. Elder Feng's game is too small. It seems only Elder Jiang has the necessary attitude. Sheng turns around and tells Elder Jiang that if he really is trying to help him, then when Sheng finally succeeds, he will return the favor by helping Jiang ascend as well. Elder Jiang watches carefully and notes that the expression Sheng is giving is not one of deceit, and he is saying all this with quite a bit of confidence. Jiang decides to bet on him and then asks Sheng what he wants Jiang to do. Sheng responds that he just wants him to help him cultivate. Sheng and Jiang go to a place. They arrive at the sect's treasury. Sheng says it is his first time there. The two start to enter while Elder Zhang says that the treasures of the treasury are not exactly there. In fact, they are stored in another dimension. Zhang stretches out his hand while saying that it is necessary to pass through the matrix to be able to retrieve them. Zhang uses his spell to access another dimension while saying that each treasure has a certain restriction. However, with the sect's token, it will probably be possible to retrieve them from there. Zhang throws an item to Sheng while saying that even possessing the token that allows a high chance of release, they still need to choose very carefully. Sheng catches the item Jiang threw to him while thanking him for these reminders. Sheng stretches out his arm while saying he needs to choose something. He then takes the sect's token and says that indeed he will need to choose something. Sheng activates his spell and orders all the treasures to come out of their dimension. At that moment, various items emerge bathed in power. The items begin to fly in all directions inside the treasury, now Sheng stands before all the treasures that float, so he can choose which one he wants. Sheng, looking at all those items, begins to reflect that his goal is to increase his cultivation, so probably consuming pills will be quite efficient. However, he thinks that the pills will only help up to a point, 
as excessive use will cause stagnation, leaving the foundation unstable and making it impossible to advance to the next stage. Sheng also thinks that all this, except for the technique, stealing the heavens, changing the days, which is a bit special. The rest of the sect's techniques are no match for the system's techniques. Sheng regrets that the technique, stealing the heavens, changing the days, isn't there, but instead in a forbidden area to which he has no access, and much less the necessary exchange to get it at that moment. Sheng glances aside and says there's something interesting there. Sheng approaches and picks up the item he found interesting. At that moment, Sheng receives a notification from the system saying that he discovered a fragment of cloud water, and after absorbing that item, it will give him 27 tribulation points and a divine rock. The system asks if he would like to absorb that item. Sheng is surprised, as he did not know it was possible to absorb something. Happily, he tosses the item into the air and agrees to absorb it. Energy begins to emanate from the item and flows throughout Sheng's body. Sheng is amazed as he absorbs the fragment. The system then notifies him that he has absorbed the Cloudwater fragment and as a reward will gain 27 tribulation points and a divine rock. Sheng, looking at the item he just absorbed, is pleased to see that a mere broken fragment can indeed provide 27 tribulation points. He thinks this is more than enough to survive about five celestial tribulations. Happily, Sheng tosses the used fragment away and thinks that if he continues like this, with four or five fragments, he will accumulate enough points for the next ranking. Sheng looks at all those items while thinking that the ancient item mission really should be his first choice when it comes to increasing his strength, especially since, the way Murong is behaving, he won't let him cultivate in peace. Sheng figures he can't waste time absorbing those ancient items of the sect. Night falls, and there are two guards patrolling at the Mystic Water Gate. One of them says that someone mysteriously died there in the sect, and wonders if they are really safe going out at that time of night. The guard with the bandana arguing with him asks how he can be so cowardly even though he's a cultivator. The guard with the bandana also says it would be good if the assassin showed up that night. He'll be very unlucky to face him on patrol, so if the assassin appears, he will enter alive and leave dead, says the bandana guy. However, he notices his friend having his throat cut. The bandana man turns while asking if everything he says makes sense. But before he can even finish his sentence, both his friend and the bandana guy have their heads cut off without even seeing how it happened. After that, Jiang is waiting for Sheng to come out of the dimension where the ancient items are. He pleads for Sheng to come out soon, as he has something urgent to report. At that moment, the portal opens, and Sheng begins to emerge from it. Sheng asks if Elder Jiang is still there. Sheng's body is overflowing with power as he exits the portal. Elder Jiang can't believe seeing Sheng's body. He comments that Sheng in three days managed to reach the second layer of base cultivation, and that is unbelievable. He also thinks that even if Sheng consumed the cultivation pills, the rapid consecutive advancement would have made him even weaker. But apparently, that wasn't the case. Jiang imagines that this is only possible because Sheng's foundation is really very strong. Jiang thinks he made the right bet this time. Sheng asks Elder Jiang what happened for him to have come there personally to tell. The two start walking as Jiang replies that he fears that Leader Sheng will probably need to go out to resolve a problem that has arisen. Leader Sheng asks what problem that would be. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and like the video. Thank you.